What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today we're going to be talking about macOS Tahoe Beta 3 and iOS 26 Beta 3. And we're going to be talking about my experience with it, how it is compared to iOS 18, and so much more. I'll also be showing you a couple of additional changes with all the platforms I cover on this channel. So yeah, no more wasting time, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I noticed is that on iPadOS, if you wiggle the cursor, you're going to notice that the cursor gets a lot bigger. So you can see the cursor right under iMovie right there. And if I were to just move it around a lot, you're going to see it gets a lot bigger. That is a brand new change here inside of Beta 3. And overall, it kind of reminds me of macOS since that functionality has been in macOS for a very long time. Now, the next additional change I'd like to show you has to do inside of watchOS and inside the control center. Apparently, liquid glass was toned down a bit in here. For example, the blue would be reflecting on the airplane mode button right there, and that just wouldn't look good. Now, personally, I think this looks a lot better than it did before. I somehow didn't catch this, but seeing that somebody did a comparison on X, I think it looks a lot better now. Uh, now, another change is that the rounded corners on iPadOS has been updated as well. So the iOS rounded corners got a little bit more subtle, but macOS is where it's night and day. I didn't see it on iPadOS quite yet, but I did notice immediately right off the bat on macOS, and that did go in the change video, but not in the iOS one. Uh, now the next change has to do with macOS, and it has to do with the little lines. Beta 2, I did forget to cover this in Beta 2, there were little lines right here, and Beta 3, they just got removed again. Personally, I think it looks a lot better like this, considering this is what the tab feature inside of macOS is supposed to be like. Not being unique inside of Safari. We're talking about you, macOS Monterey Safari 15. All right, now let's talk about my experience using all three of these platforms. Overall, they have been a lot better than Beta 2. Now, I did have one brand new issue inside of Xcode, believe it or not, and it is just not allowing me to upload apps to App Store Connect because I am using the iOS 26 style of icons. So what I'm doing is I'm using both the iOS 18 one, I have a separate iOS 18 and older one, and I have an iOS 26 version. It used to upload to App Store Connect just fine, but now it's just having a ton of issues uploading to App Store Connect, which is extremely weird to see. But other than that, no brand new issues and everything just seems to be really good. Battery life on my iPhone 14 Pro was definitely very bad inside of Beta 2 and Beta 1. But beta, the battery life is still bad, believe it or not. The battery life is still bad, but it has improved quite a bit. I'm starting to get confidence that it will be on par with iOS 18 by the time the final comes out. We'll have to wait and see about that. It sometimes is, it sometimes is not. But we'll have to wait and see on that. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the performance on my M1 MacBook Air right here. My current daily driver of MacBooks is the M4 MacBook Air right here. And I sometimes just come to my M1 MacBook Air, and in Beta 2, I've noticed that it does not feel like an M1 MacBook Air. Beta 3, it seems to be a lot better. Performance seems to be a lot better. Even doing simple tasks like browsing the web would be very slow on the M1 MacBook Air inside of Beta 2. But it seems like a lot of these have gotten fixed. Usually I keep this Mac by my bed and keep this one on my couch, just so I always have access to a Mac. But I still daily drive Sequoia, believe it or not. And personally, I don't have enough storage to upgrade to Tahoe at the moment, but I am working on upgrading my storage pretty soon on my M4 Mac Mini, and I think I'll be a future video. Now, battery life inside of WatchOS has gotten a lot better. And in fact, we actually got a brand new bug fix if you were using one of the expensive watch bands, the Hermes watch band. And for whatever reason, WatchOS should just be very unresponsive and laggy on the Apple Watch. That has been completely fixed, thank God, because if I was paying for that much for an Apple Watch, I would be really pissed if it was exclusive to that Apple Watch. So no worries, that has all been fixed. Now, is this ready for the public beta, which I guarantee is next? I'm gonna say yes. So if you're worried about major issues, I still think you should be a technical enough person, like you should be able to know how to deal with any software issues. You don't need to know how to code or anything like that. Then I think the public beta will be ready for you. And I personally can't wait to find every single little change inside of iOS, watchOS, and macOS so I can show them all to you guys. And if this video does well, I'll continue to do these follow-up videos every Saturday. Now, going inside of internal changes, if we were to go inside the code for macOS Tahoe Beta 3, you'll actually find out that Apple is secretly working on being able to update the Macs while they're in the little Apple boxes right there. This feature already exists for the iPhone. So basically how this works is that you put the iPhone on like a little pad, press the button on the pad and we'll start updating the phone. It will turn on the phone, use a little bit of battery that's currently charged, and then they just put it back and it just updates and turns itself back off. It's basically gonna be the same thing for Macs. So basically all you gotta do is put the MacBook on the same little pad, it will update and then you just put it back. It will use a little bit of battery and then 
it will be up to date, ready for the user, which I think is gonna be a lot better because just imagine buying a brand new MacBook, having Sequoia pre-installed, updating it to Tahoe and just need to relearn a couple of things. I actually did see this with macOS Monterey, people were getting used to settings and then they updated it to Ventura and they were just all messed up. I had to tell them just treat it like the iPhone settings. So I'm actually very happy that it's going to be a lot easier on my part since I'm like the IT guy that everyone comes to. And people will need to ask me, why did this update change everything? I just got this device. Does it always change like this? So yeah, that would be a lot more peaceful on my part. Anyways, thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Tell all my apps in the description down below. And be subscribed because I plan on doing these videos if this video does well every single Saturday. And let me know what you think of these kinds of videos. I might, even if they might not do well, if there are enough comments, I might still do them. And I hope to see you when the public beta comes out. Bye!